Hello and thank you. Uh, not just to you, Vera, uh, for the lovely introduction, but to you, viewers, for helping us hit that Magister difficulty incentive. I'm Big Scared. I'm a queer variety caster here on Twitch. I play a lot of horror games and I speed run a lot of horror games. I'm super excited to show off Magister difficulty. This is the hardest difficulty in the game. Uh, and it is, to the best of my knowledge, never been showcased anywhere before. So thank you so much for making that happen. Thank you for contributing towards National Women's Law Center. I can't wait to show this off. Time will be once I click in, at which point we'll have a couple minutes to get my commentary folks introduced as well. So let's just kick this off in three, two, one, let's go. Oop, sorry. <laughs> I fumbled that. I got so excited. Three, two, one, let's go. All right, Astrid, Jay, if you want to introduce yourselves. Astrid, go hey, first, because I'm alphabetical. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Astrid the Horror Girl. I, um, you know, first time here, definitely. Uh, big scared. Thank you for having me on your commentary team. I am JPEG. Uh, also, definitely the first time that you have heard my voice this week, 100%. Um, and definitely not literally with Astrid. Uh, and really excited to be here for this. I love this game. Yeah, this is um, probably one of my favorite games to speedrun. It is, as you can tell, an over the shoulder third person survival horror RPG. Uh, it is very narrative focused, so unfortunately in the speedrun setting, we're not going to be getting all of that. We'll do our best to fill in the details for you, though. Um, at this point, we're playing as a character named Babs, who we will never see again once this prologue is over. The important thing about Babs is that she's pregnant. Don't worry, nothing bad is going to happen to her or the baby, but this is an important detail that we're going to keep in our pocket for narrative reasons later on. Um, she's at a spiritual retreat run by her father, Monroe Anton, and she's decided that she does not want to participate in their ritual. Um, don't worry about what's going to happen in this cutscene because we're just going to get fast forwarded in time about 20, 30 years to present day, where we meet our actual protagonist named Jess. Now, Jess is... Um, an interesting character because she has a lot of internal conflict, but she doesn't really voice that at a lot of points in the run. The um, the at this point, right. the important detail that is imp to it's pertinent to you is that she's here because she has unresolved grief. Uh, she lost her sister at a young age. Our best friend Kim right here was there for the event, and Kim has invited us to the retreat to try and get some closure. Um, she has found it to be a positive experience. She got invited here by her yoga teacher, Tyler, who is the leader of the retreat. Um, and it is a really intimate experience intended for the inner circle. Uh, I bring that up because Jess is not part of their inner circle. And so we get some agency here as we can make some dialogue choices that will reflect whether or not we want to buy in throughout the run. This is the major mechanism for which we will get the ending. There are three endings in this game. The speedrun gets the body ending because we're going to respond with flippant, nonchalant responses. We're going to focus on uh, eliminating a lot of enemies and we're not going to pay attention to the lore. Except for right Except now. Except for right while now. While we're explaining it. While, yes. we're, while we're sort of in this introductory <laughs> phase. Also, shout out to Kim and her bare feet for walking across like a dilapidated wooden dock barefoot mm -hmm. through the rocks barefoot. Mm -hmm. Powerful toes here. Mm -hmm. No shoes at the retreat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No shoes. Uh, I've been dreading this. Yeah. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I would like to welcome you all to the end of Horror Block where we will be at Feet Fatales for the next hour and a half. <laughs> yep. This is the culmination, everybody. Yes. Uh, and this is. Is it too late for me to quit? <laughs> <laughs> and this is not simply a meme. Shoes are literally forbidden at this spiritual retreat. It is the only rule they have. Um, it has to do with grounding yourself to the island, to the spiritual forces, and being part of the process. But it does add, open up a lot of room for questioning uh, around health and safety standards. I want to point out that this was the post office. We just put a letter to ourself inside of it. Uh, the post office is literally a barrel on a stick with a roof on it. And to the best of my knowledge, it does not have a bottom. Relax, relax. 
think it's just run by the bees, yeah, too, or the flies. Like yes. Um, Here, let me show you how to calm your mind. It kind of just belongs this to them. Tyler taught me. Let's meditate with Kim. Yes. Now, breathe in. So let's meditate on the fact that we just hit $65,000. Let's go! Yo! That brings awesome. me more peace than this meditation. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much. We've got a couple moments before we get to the retreat. Uh, Rara, if there's like three or four donations, feel free to read them. Sure thing. We have uh, $50 from Soulmass218. This is a reminder, everybody. There are no shoes allowed at the retreat. Meme team has declared the return of feet fatales for this run only. Let's see some feet emotes in chat. Big scared, good luck with the run. All of us from Binary Breakers are cheering you on. Much love to you, gamer, and keep being amazing. I'm going to cry. Thank you. So much oh. too sweet. We also have $50 from the foundation to give Jess shoes. <laughs> And they say grippy socks will suffice. <laughs> this is not a grippy sock vacation. Sorry to say. Apparently they, they harsh the chill of the retreat. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're at $375 out of that 4000 needed to get that extra Chrono Trigger New Game Plus run. Beautiful. Real quick, I'm going to try and break a dialogue sequence. With the right line of dialogue, we can walk out of something that would otherwise lock us in location. This was not an optimal dialogue break, but this was still a really good one because I could get over to this interaction before Kim stopped talking. This particular tech saves between five and seven seconds every time you execute it. On an optimal run, it can save up to nine. So it doesn't look like much, but those little sequences where you can break dialogue are very important. Here's our combat tutorial. We craft sage sticks and we use them for melee combat. Um, there are two other melee items. One of them is a witch stick and the other is the flame lash. We'll be using all three at various points. There's also throwable items, uh, most notably the essential oils, salts, and fire oil, which is more or less a Molotov. By the way, what's with those If you're noticing a pattern here, chat, you're probably correct. Yes, yes. This game uh, really takes advantage of the thematic setting and leans into the campiness of the experience. That being said, um, Jess is afraid of the dark. Uh, Jay, Astra, do you two want to talk about what that means in terms of the panic dynamics of this game? Um, I can talk about it a little bit. A lot of horror games, they often will include uh, little things to incentivize the player to not go into the dark. However, uh, it doesn't work on uh, speedrunners of horror games for this particular game because if you're in the dark and you go into panic mode, it actually just makes Jess go faster. <laughs> and uh, therefore, uh, Big Scared, when put into panic mode, the game will uh, try to prompt Big Scared to not be in panic mode anymore. And that will just be ignored because why wouldn't we want to just keep going fast? Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's uh, kind of the choice that you will uh, you will see being made here. Yeah, one of the dialogue However, prompts for this mechanic literally says, run and hide to escape horrors, and I think that's great. Uh, I don't really know anyone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's so true. It's so valid. We're not going to be doing that, though. We're going to be uh, giving the horrors a big, wonderful, warm embrace. Mm -hmm. um, although, if I remember correctly, the other thing about panic is that uh, if you take really much of any damage while in panic, uh, panic, panic, <laughs> it's game over. Yeah. I'm panicking. <laughs> uh, there's a trade-off when you're in the panic state. You run faster. Uh, it is a significant amount of difference. It's, it's something you should not neglect as a speedrunner of this game, but it does make you vulnerable in most cases, and in most difficulties, you'll become a one-hit down. On Magister mode, that's rip-run if you get hit, basically, in a panic state. Yeah. So, and that's what y'all paid for, is to make this dicier. So thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to walk around this camp and meet our, our Twitter main characters. This is Sonny. He's an entrepreneur slash developer. You might know him from the Spirit Ember Festival. 
uh, that was canceled because his father and brother pulled funding. Uh, Kim, our friend, was part of the yoga retreat. Uh, there is a dancing yoga mom. There's Tyler himself. And then there's his millionaire trust fund girlfriend, Hannah. You know, I heard that Spirit Ember Festival was pretty fire, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> JPEG, I was literally I about to ask that. <laughs> if that was, that was pointing at a fire festival or not. Yeah, it, I was oh, trying it to make a joke about it and JPEG. And your skills are so much higher than mine on the on the pun well, meter. I, I appreciate it. So I'm grabbing. <laughs> Thank you so much to chat for legally distinct fire fest as the descriptor. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, original IP do not sue, but it is definitely a reference to that event. Um, all of these characters will feel familiar for a wide variety of reasons. You'll notice that I grabbed two of one of these items. So this area, I took a detour to pick up one lavender, two spirit cap mushrooms, in which case I used one, and then one sprig of ginger. These are items that we're going to need for Maya, who is over in the cafeteria. We haven't talked to her yet, but we will shortly. And she's going to make a tea out of them. The secret fourth ingredient that we are not responsible for collecting is prismic crystal dust. Uh, and so, needless to say, this is a very special type of tea. Uh, it has properties. Um, and you can infer things from what I'm trying to imply here. Uh, Tyler says this is not an illicit substance. It's all organic. He's, we're going to hear from him about that in great detail later on. But it will provide context for the experience that we're about to undergo. Now, Sonny wanted us to watch his video. We're not actually going to stay here and watch it. We do have to start it. Um, and then we're going to go check in with Maya. While she's talking, we do have time for a couple quick donations. Absolutely. So we have $75 from Milia Strange. They say the people cry out for Chrono Trigger. I agree. I'm crying out for Chrono Trigger. We're at $375 out of that $4,000 needed. Let's keep going. I'm going to switch things up in uh, the order I read things. Uh, so <laughs> we got $50. The comment says, no shoes, did you say? And this is from... The foot sniffer oh. strikes again. Oh. <laughs> you got me. I can't handle this. <laughs> the pacing in that storytelling. <laughs> Fun fact, oh lore note about my stream. The foot sniffer is a semi regular that likes to come by for this run. So thank you for showing up for this one. <laughs> you know what? You, you, you got to be real about it. In this game, there's plenty of toes to go around. Mm -hmm. And everyone, put a 07 in chat. Jess is about to take off her shoes, and we're never putting them back on for the rest of the run. They're gone. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Rip Got the up. shoes. Salute. F in chat for uh, shoes as well. Rip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we took the tea. Um, the important detail here is during our ceremony where in which we take the forbidden tea and chant together, our best friend Kim... Uh, had an anger outburst and broke the circle. This is important because from a ritual standpoint, you're not supposed to do that. There are literal mind eaters on this island and breaching the ritual does sort of put you in danger of interacting with them. Um, this game specifically refers to them in terms of being mandacores, mandaliches, mind eaters. Uh, there's a specific one called a strider and a trudger. There's also latchers. These are all variations of creatures that will essentially feed on your spiritual energy, feed on your sanity, feed on your physical health, and unalive you if you allow that to continue. Um, and so, of course, we have to go save Kim. Uh, she ran off by herself. She's our bestie. It's our responsibility to go help her, right? So we're doing that. If you ever are considering joining a spiritual retreat, do ask if there are mind eaters on the mm -hmm. island that you go to. Uh, they are legally obligated to tell you yes or no. Mm -hmm. And uh, the answer of, yeah, but you won't have to worry about them that much is not... It's not an acceptable answer. They should just say yes or no. Yeah. 
Just note that. There's Sister Bees. So I mentioned earlier that our main character has a tragic backstory where she lost her sister. This is our sister manifested as an adult woman in the shape of flies. Um, I refer to her as our Sister Bees because it feels right, but she is technically composed of a swarm of flies. Um, Sister Sister flies. Doesn't it doesn't have, have the, the same, same ring to no. it uh, because she will sit here and she will sting us and she will stun lock us and she will cause us great emotional and physical pain if we allow her to interact with us. Um, so here it is: escape horrors to recover from a panic attack. We're gonna not do that for the most part. By the way, the other thing with that panic attack was that yes, well, this game is like so 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 beautifully colored. A lot of the time, when you're in a panic attack, everything goes black and white, and there are times in this game where that can be more challenging yes. to deal with. <laughs> There's um, much more need to pay attention to the color and shape of the surroundings in the DLC, uh, which I also speed run. But in the main game, the lack of saturation can make things really tricky, especially in the late game and navigating certain sequences. Um, so hopefully that won't bamboozle us too hard when we get there. In the meantime, we're here at a cannery. I don't know why this island has a cannery, but that's where Kim's hanging out. Um, where else are they going to get the cans? True. That is an excellent point. <laughs> True. <laughs> Uh, of course, we are going to have a brief moment here where you have to walk through the dark. There is a jump scare on the other side of us. Please don't be surprised by the fact that Tyler's going to pop out any second now. Yeah! Get away from me! Oh, it's you. Okay. Don't he holds up his elbow and like pu like punch like that one guy on Vine who gets startled <laughs> and like goes into the jutsu <laughs> position for a second and then leaves like that's. <laughs> It's true. That tea is 100% organic. Yeah. It is. Completely natural. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, he's going to ask us what to do. We're going to tell him to get out of our way, which is a, the best thing to do for a speed run. He is very much in our way. Whatever. I'm going to grab this. And then his, like, slow walk off. Yeah, he just sort of shambles off. Uh, we have to go in here to get a fuse. Now, pay no mind to the conspiracy board. The camera's going to go. The point here is that you can move as it's zooming back. So I'm going to do a little off-camera movement, and hopefully we'll end up at the door. Yes. Very well done. Yes. And we have to fight this mandacore. Um, this is the primary life form of the gloom. We haven't really talked about what the gloom is. Uh, but these are the things that live in the biomass around the gloom areas. Uh, technically, the gloom is everywhere, but you can only really see it when it's illuminated by these very colorful zones of fog. Uh, I mentioned there used to be a cult. This is one of the former members. We're just going to bait and then dodge. And that went beautifully. came directly from Alan Wake 2 to participate in the speedrun. Yeah, he heard there's a champion of light over here, and he's going to show yes. us the mm -hmm. angel of darkness or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> now, we came I here all the way want to, tie in. to find Kim. I have a question for you gamers. Is she okay? Kim? I, I yes. think so. I think I'm, I'm pretty confident. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah she seems absolutely. perfectly fine. One hundred percent. That um, was that was woo. That was woo because she's having so much fun. Yeah, <laughs> she's yeah. a woo girl. Yeah, she's a woo girl. She had a nice big bottle of pomegranate wine, and she's partying here at Frost Fatales. I mean, mm -hmm. that's me before every speedrun I do. True. So just out of <laughs> excitement for them mm -hmm. to happen. This is what they're canning here: is a uh, strawberry jelly. Yes. Um. Not anything else. Well, that's well, good they're to doing know. a pretty bad job of it because it's everywhere. You know, it's it's kind of an old building and things yeah. just get sloppy and stained over time. And Kim's like new at it. It's just, you know, it's, we can't we can't yuck other people's yuck. Listen, some people <laughs> age their beverages in barrels. Other people age their beverages on the floor. I can't judge too hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we're doing right now is we're collecting a couple key items that we need to progress. This is the primary game loop when we're not in combat segments of finding keys, 
finding these metallic pieces, which will eventually form these very home goods inspired geogra- uh, geometric shapes that we'll put into doors, which function as keys. Um, we'll also be doing a little bit of prepping for crafting. And so you'll see me pick up things like twine or sage or maybe an extra sprig of ginger as we will go along just to have insurance to make sure we have the things we need for combat. Generally, um, most of the arenas in this game will have what you need to complete the combat task, but it does help to have a couple extra pieces in your inventory. This is one of those home goods pieces like uh, Big was just talking mm -hmm. about, see? And that's a key. You could get that up on your wall. Yeah. <laughs> Grab some more stuff. There's going to be another mandacore out here blocking the way. Now, you might be wondering, uh, why does the gloom seem to disappear when you defeat the mandacore? And that's because when you dissipate them, the biomass around them dissipates, and it sort of weakens the... Um, Oh no, this is bad. This is really bad. Uh oh. We're gonna have to backtrack a little bit. Uh, Rot row. So we're gonna have to actually escape the horror. The downside of being in a panic state is that you can't actually attack anything. You can't use your magic. You can't continue the combat. And so being put into a panic state mid combat is really bad. Uh, that was unfortunate RNG. Hopefully Kim here will present less of an obstacle because we're going to have to purify her in a ritual sense. There's three... Well, Kim usually is very accepting of that, so... Yeah, I'm yeah sure this is usually... Okay? This is a calm, relaxing process. This yeah. is... Yeah. Uh, would you all like to describe what this ritual entails as I fight her? Yeah, um, I think what you're going to do is you're just going to give her like a warm hug and then show her a warmth. Yeah, you're just going to show her some warmth and light via candles and sometimes, make her smell them. Yeah, and sometimes when you uh, are trying to get through to your friend, you just have to um, help them see the light. That's one thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And another thing is just take oh, them over so and sorry, have them take a, take a, a good, good look, look at themselves. <laughs> yeah. You know? That was such a good like, Kim really fight. close. Yeah, it was. That we was beautiful. That was so good. It, Kim has a wide it's worth, like attack range. So that was that was unhinged. Huh. It's worth noting that if Kim gets like one grab on a big scared in there, that's automatic 10 second time loss, no matter what. Yeah, yeah it's, and, it's uh, long. And that was perfect. That was literally a perfect thing. It it looked like Kim stood no chance <laughs> from uh, our perspective, but uh, that was just really good gameplay. Thank you. That is a spicy fight, especially because it is so close quarters. Yeah. Like, you have no room. Kim has uh, at least five discreet ways she can come at you. She can either do the swipes that she did, which is the one you want, uh, she can do a scream attack because she also has magic because of the prismic crystal around her neck. Uh, she can do a move where she'll grab you and try to suck your soul out of your face. Uh, she can tackle you. And then there is another move where she pushes you that is very rare to get. Um, and so we got pretty ideal cycle there. Um, now, Sunny, unfortunately, is having a bad time. And he's run off to the mines. He, he Sunny like yearns many, for them. yeah, exactly. He, like many Minecraft children, yearns for the mines. <laughs> and, and also, this is the chapter that the first time I watched Big play this, they described as being full of cool dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're gonna be, <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be seeing some cool dogs in this chapter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're definitely dogs, yeah. Um, I don't know if I believe you. I mean, lots of things are cool dogs if you look at them from a distance enough. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Sonny's on his way to go pet a really cool dog right now, and I can't stand in his mm -hmm. way. We nailed the off-camera movement. Perfect. Beautiful. GG. That door is a little squirrely because um, the thing you might not notice is that you still have momentum going into that cutscene. And so depending on where you stop running will determine where you're able to pick up running coming at that door. And I have overshot it so many times. Also, 
uh, a nice touch here is that you're starting to notice like uh, the different colors of gloom and the different crystals that you're acquiring uh, from the different people at the retreat, the, the colors of the gloom are changing. So we were in like a blue before, now we've got lots of orange. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see the whole beautiful rainbow and we love a horror game that went, no, we're gonna use all of the colors and it's still gonna be scary. You know, well, I don't know how that you was, did that. That was scared, so spicy. Great job. I have no salt <laughs> either. Bananas. This is spicy. This one can one shot kill me if I get grabbed. I did not get grabbed. I'm gonna hit it with stasis, come over here. We're gonna keep nice, an eye nice, on it. Nice, nice, Because it will uh, try to jump Ooh. on us. Woo! Oh! Welcome to hard mode, baby! One more. Nice. Excellent. I've lost many Magister. runs to that enemy. So that one is called a Mimi Crawler. Uh, it is what happens when one of the Mandacores embeds itself into a human. So, you know, totally safe to be here. Yeah. Hello, Angie. Good to see you. She behaved. Mm -hmm. Very good. Would y'all like to talk about she's some of the things Angie the can do? Because she's an interesting enemy. Astrid, I believe that you may be more of an expert on that one than me, because I usually just see Big run away from Angie at about a thousand miles an hour. I mean... <laughs> I thought that's what you're supposed to do, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is what you're supposed to do. I do know that she can stun bog. <laughs> but she's got that move. The B-NATO. Oh, I forgot about the tornado. I forgot I about, the forget about the tornado. I did forget about the B-NATO. The B-NATO is the bane of my existence because Angie does this very fun and not at all frustrating thing where she likes to stand in front of you and then do that to block your path. Just like, hey, I know you're trying to do a speed run, but please look at me. I demand attention. You know, she's large and oh, in charge. Sisters, am I right? I think you went this way. All right. Also, reminder, nobody in this sequence is wearing shoes, and we're about to walk into some abandoned mines, which that's a true horror as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, nothing in this retreat has been in use since the 70s at the earliest. And so, like, when we're thinking about... Health and safety, of course. Uh, sanitation has been lacking on top of all the other things. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, someone fresh out of the city is going to be perfectly equipped for this barefoot journey. Yeah, they mm -hmm. basically said, welcome to Splinter World. Please remove your shoes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick this up for insurance. All right. Well, we sort of I love how you say that. navigate the uh, mine, or at least the entry to the mine here. Where is there any donations for us? Uh, yes. Uh, seems like a lot of people are wanting that blanket because we got a bunch of fifty dollar donations. So we had fifty dollars from Blarlack, no comment, but thank you for that. Another fifty dollars from Mezzo, no comment, but thank you so much for that. Another $50 from Sigma Beta with no comment, but thank you so much. As a reminder, that incentive for the extra Chrono Trigger New Game Plus run is still open. We are at $375 out of the $4,000 needed. So and to get that met, chat, I want to hear about your favorite Chrono Trigger ending. Because I hear that there's like three billion gajillion million of them. At least I have some. So tell me, which one is your favorite ending? And make sure that when you send that in, you're adding the Chrono Trigger New Game Plus run to your donation. Thank you. That makes sense to me, because Chrono Trigger is a classic. Much like this, and much like, I just like to point out that Sunny, when we walked up, was barefoot, standing in water, hitting a circuit breaker with a rock. Yes. So. We're doing some very safe electrical engineering here. Uh, barefoot, well, Calf deep in water. This feels very safe. This feels like an OSHA violation. You know? You said it. I didn't have to. Mm -hmm. uh, shout out to what the ha haunting ground run earlier. Uh, we brought frogs for you. Absolutely. Spe Speaking of OSHA violations, chat, uh, donate if you're forklift certified. I would like to know. Thank yes, you. Yes, that's very important information. <laughs> now... 
Here's an enemy that I simply refer to as Big Frog. Everyone say hi to Big Frog. Big Frog. Big Frog. Hello, hi. buddy. Big Frog here will try to give us a kiss. I'm going to say no respectfully. Um, but I'm going to hope that Big Frog does not block my... Does not block my way to this upgrade. Frog. We got past Frog, it. please. Good job. Now, I mentioned... What if I'm Magister? Yeah. Magister, we have to upgrade uh, a couple times. So we need those. Mm -hmm. I was actually curious. I was like, I don't remember. We do. Big frog. I mean, there's lots of big frog and frog in general. You in know, this section. Because that's what mines are filled with. Uh, if, if you desire frogs, run to the mines. Don't do that. Please, <laughs> chat, do not. <laughs> Take this in advice. Don't do this. <laughs> JPEG, I was already taking off my shoes in preparation to go to the mine. Listen, can I quote you on that? Or <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Actually, hold on. Um, but I'd like to incite trouble. Yes. <laughs> you may quote incite me. <laughs> Now, Sunny is asking a very important question. Do you know who I am to a door? Mm-hmm. And then that door did not know who Jess no, was. No, And was like, you know what? Nah. Um, to be fair, Jess just got here. She did. She did. So, yeah. We're about to get a greeting from an enemy that I call the horse boy. This is just another type of the cultist. They are a quadrupedal. They are on all fours as opposed to two. And I bring that up because there's a point later in the run where one of those enemies could sabotage a boss fight. Sunny, don't do this! Heck. Stop running, Sunny! You're an imposter! Sunny's delusion right now, uh, Sunny's big delulu is that he has come up with like a brilliant plan and that that motivation, I believe, is like in the mind. Yes. And he's going to make a lot of money and prove everybody wrong because he feels ashamed of what happened with the uh, Spirit Ember Festival. Exactly. And he wants to redeem himself. So the if you're hearing lots the, of like, you're wrong, I'll prove you wrong. That's what he yeah. means. The thing about the Spirit and Ember Festival was uh, it probably would have just been a lot safer if it was in the abandoned OSHA violated mine. So... <laughs> Probably. Honestly, you know. <laughs> Why are you here, Jess? He looks fine. Yeah, he's fine. Don't worry about it. Sunny, this is again. This is just how I look before speedruns. It's okay. This running. is just speedrun prep that's going on. Listen, he was just face first in a watermelon and got it all over the place. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Also, he's gonna help and open like every single door for us through this sequence mm -hmm. that we need. Like, he's just going to bust them all open for us, which is really, really helpful. He's such a gentleman. He opens the doors. Mm -hmm. He makes sure the path is clear. He tests the very old and faulty elevator. I just, I love and respect Sunny. Mm-hmm. And he clearly loves and respects us. Mm -hmm. This part is pretty tricky. What Big Scared is going to have to do is basically uh, survive, but survive in a way where they are not going to the elevator. Yes. <laughs> um, because yeah. uh, Big Scared uh, needs to be doing that instead. And if the enemies are there, it's just going to be annoying, basically. Yeah, there's going to be at least three waves of enemies. Uh, this big boy, two waves of smaller enemies. Those, the first one. There's going to be another big boy. That's my final cue. They're going to bust through that door at the end. Why did you smack Ooh. me? That's so rude. Uh, when this door opens, that's when we can make our run to the elevator. But we don't want them near the elevator because if they're over there, they can smack us away from it. They can body block. It's just very rude. We're just keeping and, them in a little uh, circle. They, they can be killed, but mm -hmm. time, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. It just takes a while. All right. There's our entrance, and we can go. On lower difficulties, you can even kill one of the smaller enemies by pushing them. Just the standard shove animation does enough damage that if you do that for, like, a minute, they'll just die. But again, time. Now. And we just took a normal elevator ride. 
there is going to be some light uh, construction work down here. We do have to do some demolition, some path opening for ourselves. We can't let Sunny hold every door for us. And so we're going to have to, once he takes his leave, find not only a stick of dynamite, but an appropriate length fuse for it. So again, we're gonna do a little bit of running around in here, gathering items to progress. If there's any donations or messages you'd like to share with the stream, now's a great time. Sure thing. We have $50 from Coffees. <gasps> they say time Coffees. to align our chakras. Coffees. I'm, I'm prismically aligned with that donation. Thank Angel. you. <laughs> We also have $250 from Anonymous with no comment. Thank you so much for that generous donation. Chat, a reminder, when you send in your donations, make sure that you are scrolling down to the bottom of that donation page. You are clicking Add Incentive, and you are choosing the Extra Chrono Trigger New Game Plus run. And then after that, you have to click the Add button again. If we want yes. to see that get met. We want to add more games to the schedule so we can have more fun and so we can raise more money for a great cause. Don't you want to align with the chakras of Chrono Trigger? Don't we want to align our chronos with the trick? I don't know where I'm going with this, but I do want to see that. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, can, we can take this somewhere. We can, we can yeah, workshop this. I can feel it. I don't know where, but... It's going I feel, somewhere. I feel it in my chakras. They are burning. Mm -hmm. My chakras are burning with anticipation for that Chrono Trigger incentive to be met. I would love to see it happen. Mm -hmm. Isn't that also, isn't my chakras are burning something Sunny says? Yes, he literally just said it as he was getting picked up by yeah. that Strider. Um, we mentioned a cool dog. That's the one that I usually point out uh, because mm -hmm. that is a very fun enemy. Uh, We're going to have to do combat against that enemy, unfortunately, uh, in an attempt to save Sunny. I'll let you place your bets now on whether or not that's going to happen. I'm an optimist, so I say yes. Mm, I love your faith. I, I also say yes, because that festival is happening in the chant, too. Yes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> So that's the that's the ARG for the chant too. Yeah. Is the festival is real? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Get your tickets. You know what? I'm gonna be the contrarian naysayer because we're going for the body ending, and I'm gonna be flipping to be like, no, Sunny's not gonna make it. That's mm. I'm I'm going along with the character that we're playing here. So that's the reason I'm making this choice. You got to play to the canon. Beautiful. Now, I mentioned we're going to have to try to save Sunny. This is the combat segment where we're going to have to do that. I'm going to be using a couple specific strats. Uh, first, I'm going to be using a lot of these essential oils. And I'm also going to switch over here to the witch stick. The witch stick is important because it has the unique feature of when you're using it in gloom fields, it will recharge your spirit feeder, which means more mana, uh, which is always a good thing. We want to avoid these green charged attacks and essentially do our best as we go. You know, when he's uh, covered in essential oils and also like this like plant incense situation going on, I bet this cool dog smells amazing. Yeah, it, Doesn't this screen look like it smells delicious right now? It does. <laughs> <laughs> Get enough. These are very cool dogs, by the way. Uh, they are. Rara, you see, you, your fears were unfounded. Here's the mm -hmm. cool dogs. You know, I'm still not 100% convinced. <laughs> Aww. You don't think these dogs are cool? But look, he's got like happy tappies. He's doing like tiptoes. <laughs> look, they just want to shake hands. They tried to give me their paw and everything. Oh, he's a good boy. Oh, he's a good boy. <laughs> You a tree? You a go walk? Yes, they do. Go walkies. <laughs> All right, we have enough juice in our spirit meter to do another charged attack. I'm gonna grab some stuff until this guy comes off the wall. Beautiful. Hit that. Um, you might be wondering what this ability is. This is Sunny's ability. He can summon crystals from the ground in a radius. It's very cool for crowd control. 
Uh, it's not super effective for flying enemies, so there are fights where it is not our most effective tool in our arsenal. But for land-based combat like this, it is. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Sunny didn't make it. So put an F in chat for him. We were unable to save him. We'll do the festival in your stead, Sonny. Don't worry. Yeah, it'll be the we'll uh, memorial festival instead. It'll be fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll be the pyre festival because he's dead and it's his funeral. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a little harsh? I don't know. A lot of harsh things happen on no, this island. No, your mind. It was perfect. <laughs> Okay, this room is spicy. Um, there's going to be a Mimic Crawler in here. It's going to be very aggressive. Once again, they can one-shot kill me. Uh, but it will be guarding a Mandacore on the wall that I have to destroy. If you destroy the Mandacore, the Mimic Crawler goes with it. And so I'm, that's where my focus is going to be. That being said, it could kill me here. So I'm going to focus for a second. Uh, and I'm also going to prep this Molotov. I wasted that ability. And, and we can now hear Sonny's voice inside our head, I believe, because we are using his abilities. Mm -hmm. I think that's how that works. Yeah. The crystals that we're collecting from the various other NPCs around the island are charged with their prismic energy. Uh, which means all of their anxieties, all their fears, all their worries, all their special abilities, and also all of their inner thoughts. Uh, and so, mm -hmm. periodically we'll hear Kim pop back into our head, we'll hear Maya, we'll hear Sunny, we'll hear ourself. It's very interesting. There's just a lot to unpack here, is the point. Mm -hmm. I want to point out that uh, sometimes... Um, when uh, fighting things like the crawlers that are around with these mandicores, it looks like a big scare just ignores them. That's because once the mandicore dies, so do they. Mm -hmm. So yep. it's not really uh, top priority. Having a sister bees moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're just going to come Use out and say sister hi. Bees. Uh, the cool thing about enemy aggression in this game in particular is the moment you interact with something that is a quest objective so like a ladder uh, a generator a particular set of doors the uh enemy's aggro is reset and so what just happened there is i climbed the ladder and both angie the fly monster and that bear cultist just sort of yelled about it and left <laughs> they went back to their spawn point. Ah, oh, you um, touched the ladder. I gotta go. Yeah. And then they just leave. <laughs> They're also going to do the same thing when we touch this generator in a moment. So hopefully, as long as they don't smack us too many times along the path, this is a freeway to our fast travel system. And what a fast travel system it yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, real quick warning for folks with misphonia who don't like squelching sounds uh, or similar sort of mouth soundsy things. The fast travel will have a lot of that. Um, feel free to mute for a moment once we get to the next patch of gloom. I'll warn you when we get closer. It is, it is in fact rather squelchy. That's, that's a good way to describe that. Yeah, it has very much a mouth sounds sort of energy to it. Um, which is appropriate because it is very intestinal. Yeah. This is our fast travel system. This is your warning. Uh, if you this need to mute, time. do so. We are in the gloom vortex. Uh, this is our fast travel system. It has six different entry and exit points throughout the island. They all take you to that central hub. And then depending on which prisms you have, you'll be able to access the others. And so as far as backtracking in this game goes, that is the primary mechanism through which people are meant to do backtracking. Also, you'll notice uh, we did pass them. The the eyeball theme also continues through the event. Yeah, they're just keeping an eye <laughs> out. True. Mm hmm. Eyes on the prize, baby. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also, I believe, uh, just in case, we we are clear from the mouth sounds for a we moment are. now. We're 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 back to some other horrific things, but not the mouth sounds. Yeah. 
Um, we are about to enter Maya's chapter, which is a bit of an auto-scroller here at first because we're forced into walking, and we are forced into specifically walking with Maya, who walks at a very specific pace. She will always be slightly in front of us during these segments. Um, I have a suspicion that if you move the camera in a specific way, she might move faster. So, for example, if I were to do this, she'd try to get in front of me, which she did. Um... But there's not a lot we can do to accelerate this. So while we're walking with Maya, if there's any donations you like to read, now's a great time. Absolutely. Uh, so we have $25 from Feminim Eminem. <laughs> I knew that was going to be tough for me to do, but I took it on. Uh, the no comment. Thank you so much for that donation. Really? Did you see him? And we also have $50 from Rain Y with no comment. Thank you so much for that donation. The chat, I have been told to ask uh, regarding Chrono Trigger, are mountains in fact nice? Now, I don't know a lot about Chrono Trigger, but when I look at mountains, I think they look pretty nice. Uh, apparently, it's a pretty well-known quote. So, do you... Do y'all just want to tell me your favorite Chrono Trigger quote? The more unhinged, the better, honestly. Mm -hmm. My my favorite part of Chrono Trigger is when Chrono looks straight into the camera and like it zooms in on his face for him to do this. And he goes, that really Chrono's my triggers. And then the game continues like nothing happens. <laughs> yes, that's my favorite part too. <laughs> This is true. I've definitely played Chrono Trigger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure if that's real, but you said it with enough confidence that I believe you. <laughs> I've never doubted. Uh, I've never doubted JPEG. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you now, should. I, like I had no interest in playing Chrono Trigger, and now it sounds like a really great game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that could that's, be a fun game. You could you could send me a quote, and I'll try to figure out if it's a real quote or not. <laughs> yes, that should be the game. <laughs> just just write sentences in there, and we'll tell you. And make sure you're adding that Chrono Trigger incentive when you send in that donation. Thank you. See, I think Jay got it wrong. I'm pretty sure when the camera zooms in on Chrono's face, he just he gets a really serious expression. And he goes, "It's Chrono time." He really <laughs> Does it Chrono everything. Yes. He chronos all over yes. the place, yeah? <laughs> it is your fault Angie died. Do you have time for a quick donation? Absolutely, we got time for at least two more. Yes. Perfect, we just got $100 <gasps> from Anonymous. It just says horrible squelching sounds. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> we got another $100 from Cam1881. I love terrible jokes, so I'm making my incentive to have kid be called adult. Oh, that's love a good one. And what that's you do. a good one. <laughs> love you all and what you do. Rock on and good luck. Have fun. That's well, a great reminder you. that we also have that bid war open to name five of the Chrono Cross characters. So with that donation, kid is now going to be named adult, with second place being chef. So if you want kid to be named chef instead... Make sure that you donate to that. I love that. It's actually really confusing for me to say, because, like, do, do you want kid to be named adult? Do you want kid to be named chef? <laughs> Ooh, she dove at it's me. It's all getting mixed up. Uh-oh. Bittersweet news. Uh, while she did hit me, that put me in a panic state, so we're going to run faster and save time briefly. Yeah. That was just a, a, a friendly helping. boost. She's helping. Mm-hmm. For instance, uh, like Hades is coming mm -hmm. up, and Hades runners will know that sometimes you just need a little chaos to uh, temporarily hinder you, but ultimately give you some kind of bonus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is true. That's all that happens there. <laughs> also, we're entering the uh, the lighthouse oceanic uh, portion of the of the marathon. Uh, did you know you needed a lighthouse block? No, but you're getting one. Congratulations. Yeah, very important horror trope, uh, lighthouse being featured. Uh, specifically, we are here to align a wide variety of crystals with the beam we will be generating from the lighthouse. But that's going to be a problem for us to solve in mm, about five minutes. In the meantime, we have to meet up with Maya 
and get some mercury of all things. Gamers, mm -hmm. how do we feel about the fact that we're going to be carrying a damaged container of 40 year old mercury? I think this is going to be a safe, fun, and healthy endeavor, and um, we should be like all those TikToks where people just like palm it. Like just, in an effort to we should, we should do not this. spill any of that mercury, we should just drink it, and that oh. way we just get it out of us when we get to the other side. Yeah, we just we just take a big we bring it in a sippy cup, and you just take a little sippy along the way. The forbidden. I would sippy. like to once again bring up OSHA violations. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this this game truly has come with me, and you will be in a world of OSHA violations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, Maya here is a very fun part of the speed run. Uh, and when I say fun, I mean fun in a challenging way because she has some patterns in this segment before we even get to the lighthouse puzzle that can potentially Maya, kill your speed you? run. I mentioned earlier that dialogue breaks are important. Uh, the most important dialogue break in the run is the one that we're gonna do at the bottom of the staircase with Maya. Um, if we don't break sequence with her there, she will trap us into a two minute conversation where she asks us about the ghost of her dead son. Um, and honestly, that's just a vibe that we don't want to invite into our speed run. Yeah. And so we're going to try to flank her when we come back with the Mercury. Um, I also want to point out that this is one of the few glitches in the game that exist. I'm not going to perform it because it's wildly unstable. But if there are glitch hunters viewing this a uh, particular run, I would like to invite you to investigate this ladder because there is a particular setup you can do at the top of the ladder that will make her fall rather than climb. It's just hard to do and imprecise. Uh, I would love you forever if you found that. <laughs> also, please run this game. I would love to see your runs. I'm a moderator on SNC for it. You're also, yeah, you're just a huge proponent of things that this game has done and the way, like, the things that the devs have done and making it accessible for people. And this game is genuinely very, very cool. And the devs are neat and for real play it. Yeah, <laughs> this is Brass Token Studios' first game. And it is so well programmed and so robust that it is hard to break TBH. Like, it, that's the reason why there's not a lot of glitches and why they're so unstable. It's because they did such a good job with their QA that they ironed all that out. Um, they added in their most recent set of patches a update that allows you to have um, more control over things like audio, over visual effects, over um, having access to things like accessibility features such as health bars for the enemies which were not even in the game um it, this game is really cool in the way that they approach development and accessibility and just the fact that it's so bright is unique in horror i think there's not a lot of horror games mm -hmm. that embrace saturation and vivid color in the way that this game does Also, we, we're feeling funky from this Mercury right now, but it's okay because known fact about Mercury is as soon as it leaves your possession, you're immediately, like, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we're going to be like, whoa, let's pour it in, and then basically, like, one cutscene and... Not even a cutscene. We're already good. Yeah. This is this is how mercury poisoning don't this is not how mercury poisoning works please do not that might be a little too far of sarcasm even for me please don't carry mercury yeah. with their bare please hands please exercise you. proper safety don't do what just does here i mentioned that we're gonna have to break dialogue sequence with kim that's at the bottom i mean with maya here it's at the bottom of the ladder so i'm gonna try to focus for a second really hope we get this path correct Okay. Good job. 
So the trick there Beautiful. is you have to get out the door before she turns around. But if you take a path that is too close to her, she'll turn around faster. Then you have to hear a very sad conversation. Yes. And yeah. it not only ruins the vibe, but it also, you lose like at least a minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we haven't spent a ton of time talking about um, Maya as a character, um, but her storyline is, even compared to the other ones, like, notably sad and intense yeah um, um like it, and it's tragic it's a bit more, because while the yeah, other characters really um the unfortunate things about their storyline are largely due to like mistakes they've made hers is a really big one um and it impacted mm -hmm. more than just herself so like sunny mm -hmm. is like a family issue he has self-confidence kim is like an unresolved grief from her past Maya here chose not to vaccinate her child. Um, and so it's really unfortunate because she recognizes in retrospect that that wasn't the right thing to do in her circumstances. Uh, and she mm -hmm. has such profound grief that it is consuming her. Um, and it's, it's providing such a moment here while she's in the gloom that she can't really see past it. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, okay with you, uh, Big Scared, I'd want to talk about just how horror games um, dealing with mm -hmm. uh, kind of like grief as a means of personification in like the world mm -hmm. and the environment. Like, yeah, hit us with it. It's, it's something that uh, horror games do a lot and... I've always um, found that when horror games do it well, they're some of my favorite mechanisms for storytelling in gaming in general. And uh, some of the best horror games of all time have been recognized and known for doing these things. Whereas also some of the worst horror games of all time are ones that have attempted to do that. And yeah. it's, it's sort of like a very... A unique and difficult thing to kind of approach in horror storytelling mm -hmm. in general, but to be able to do it in a horror game, that's just another reason to pick up the chant. They are very good storytellers, and it is mm -hmm. definitely worth uh, if you can if you can handle the storyline and the places that it goes to with this. It's definitely worth picking up if you're a fan of horror gaming. Yeah, and I think it's worth noting that the tact and care that they put into telling these stories is really... It shows, right? Like, these are nuanced topics that could potentially be really traumatizing for people. But the level of compassion and care that they tell these stories with, I think, allows them to be more than just trauma, you know? Yeah, Maya is and so they're human. They're pacing. Mm -hmm. She's she's honestly like, in terms of like the depth of characters in this, like Maya, honestly like might be my like favorite in terms of like the work that they did on her, um, because her her grief and the way she expresses herself is so decidedly human um, that. It's just this this sequence with like the lighthouse, mm -hmm. the water, and then hearing her emotions and processing is genuinely like really well done. And then it's offset at the same time by like these moments of kind of like hilarity in the absurd. Like that there's moments of like sunny story with like the my chakras are burning, and then he gets carried off by a cool dog, and then you have this moment and like so their storytelling and the way that they play things off of each other is just this game rules yeah all right here comes the spicy loop you got this yep everybody lend big scared your power hands towards the screen so that uh your energy transfers through. yeah i'm gonna Thank need you. everyone to spirit bomb me with good vibes yep <laughs> One giant spirit bomb coming your way. Thank you so much. 
Um, the reason why I worry about this particular loop is that there is an enemy known as, I think it's a treasure. Um, I usually refer to it as a swimmer because it will swim down into the floor and become unhittable. Um, simultaneously, it will hit you while it is unhittable. And it's it's a very rude enemy. Um, prior, prior strats for this category uh, required you to upgrade before the fight. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna save my upgrades for later. Uh, so please, send me all the strength you have. I'm gonna need it. Yes. Especially because we are on Magister, baby. We are. Yes. We are being chased right now by two cultists. One is floating, one is running. I want them to be grouped up here. They are not grouped up here. Everybody group up. Everybody be cool real quick. Everybody be cool. She tried to spit on me, which was very rude. Uh, you did. That was pretty clutch. She tried it again. <laughs> you, uh, oh, ho, ho. Incredible. <laughs> How rude. That's so rude. That was here gaming right here. It's mm -hmm. true. Big scared. Actual big scared big might gaming be a gamer. Mm. Big scared might be a gamer. Uh, there's there's been reports. Survey says big scared does enjoy the gaming. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna bully this enemy into a corner if it lets me. The goal is to not give it any room to start swimming. Don't you swim on me. Oh, Beautiful. oh, oh, oh. We, we tried it. They tried it. Beautiful. And we did not spawn the extra mandaliches. Uh, they're going to trigger as we walk away from this crystal, but doing this early allows us to solve this turret section uh, and then just sort of run past them. Otherwise, we would have to fight them before we could interact with that. Okay, we don't need that. What am I stuck on? Something invisible? Cool. Just like a little piece of rock on the ground. Such is the chant. <laughs> well, it's the risk that you take when you make the bold decision to not take the shoes. I know. I mean, was that really a decision that we could make to be like, nah, I'm going to keep my shoes on? I don't think they would have <laughs> let us in. No. Uh, and fun fact, gamers, I have talked about this in some of my other runs, but it's worth mentioning now uh, that in Jess's tent, there is not just one pair of shoes, but two. The pair she took off and a backup set. She brought spare shoes and yet is choosing to run around barefoot, which I think is criminal. <laughs> mm -hmm. So she said no to shoes twice she did. is how that math works out. They said it's forbidden and she said bet. <laughs> She really speaking wanted math, to join the feet fatale. Yeah. Yeah. Spe speaking of math, how are we doing on that Chrono Trigger incentive? We are at $385 out of that 4,000 still. So, chat, we need to get that number moving. I want to see it go up, please, and thank you. Yeah, bare, bare feet for Chrono Trigger. That's definitely going to be a slogan that catches on. I want to <laughs> see that. Hashtag bare feet for Chrono Trigger. I like it. Hash yeah. <laughs> It'll catch on. Everyone will know what we mean and um, immediately latch on to this. I'm latching on Chat, right now. If you want to donate the various ocean <laughs> violations you you're witnessing <laughs> in this game, I would love to, <laughs> I would love to read them because I'm sure there's yes. some that I've missed. Yeah, let's talk about them. Like, if you know the, in fact, like OSHA codes and stuff like that that Ooh. are actively being violated, um, I want to know. And if you don't, and you just think like, mm, this should be an OSHA violation, I want to know that too. Because you're probably <laughs> right. You're Make probably your own OSHA violations. <laughs> <laughs> Choose your own adventure. Yeah. <laughs> so this is phase one of the fight against Maya. Uh, because she has lost her child, the Gloom has promised her that they can revive him. Uh, and this is the form they have chosen to give her. Uh, she can make babies now. Aren't they beautiful? Don't you want to hold them? Yeah. They're squealing with joy because we're showing <laughs> them pretty green lights. Also... Exciting. 
the fact that this battle has like the sickest drum solo the whole time <laughs> just gets me. Yeah, it's truly a banger. Mm hmm. Someone in chat said if you can't invent your own OSHA violations, store bot is fine. Yes! <laughs> Thank you so much. You're so right. Give up your shells! This is what you do to your friends that are having a hard time with their grief, is you hit them with, like, a sage stick for a while. That's what I learned from uh, the retreat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. More babies, more little guys. These are just little guys. These are little, little guys, actually. Specifically. Fun fact, because we are playing on Magister, I will use this ability at some point in the run, which is pretty cool. Um, that's one of the big differences between Magister and Neophyte difficulty is Neophyte, you really rely on the crystal spell and stasis, whereas this one, you have much more varied gameplay that is contextual. And so keep an eye out for these spores, uh, particularly when we get to the final boss later on. Also, all these really sharp shells. Um, we're just getting a good exfoliation. I bet, actually, when we leave this <laughs> island, it's going to have been, like, the greatest pedicure we ever received. Calluses who don't know her. <laughs> We're doing a great job bullying Maya into a corner. Yeah. Mm hmm Trying that to be aggressive, optimal. but no. Mm -hmm. Wow. Excellent. We're gaming. So the cool thing about that arena is that it's spiky. Um, I say cool uh, in a strategic way because it, it can be very unfortunate. Uh, because the spikes will hurt you if you are pushed against them. The green sort of cloud bursts that Maya releases out of herself when she does the charge up attack, it can stun lock you back and into those spikes. You can alternatively use Kim's yell attack to push Maya into them. What I was doing was just meleeing her really hard into them uh, and thus trying to save some mana while still taking advantage of the DPS they offer. Again, I'm very sorry for the gastrointestinal noises. Mm -hmm. uh, we are very much in the island's underbelly right now, both metaphorically and literally. Very gut-like. So to drown out those noises real quick, um, the bid war to name kid is starting to get a little interesting. <gasps> Ooh. So oh. someone added OSHA. Nice. Yeah! Nice. <laughs> name Shout out to like, my boy Osha! <laughs> which is currently tied for second place with Chef. And Adult is still in the lead with $100. Listen, <laughs> there will be no Osha violations we gotta get if Osha's on the case. We gotta, we yeah. gotta up the safety of Chrono Trigger. Yeah. We need the red prism, right? Kid is, in fact, the Osha officer <laughs> of Chrono Trigger. <laughs> <laughs> This is true. 100% factual. Again, you can trust me. <laughs> also, shout out to Hannah for being incredibly clean and pristine next to Jess, who literally... I mean, I've seen what Jess has been up to, and yet I still think this is an excessive amount of dirty. It's interesting that you bring that up, because I have a theory that the filth in this game is equal parts literal and symbolic. Um, because as you noticed in the Ooh. sequence with Sunny, where we're chasing him around, he just got really juicy all of a sudden, even though he hadn't been in any combat. Uh, I think that is specifically yeah. referring to their mental state rather than their physical, like, I got dirty. Um, the reason why Jess is so saturated is because mentally, she's not having a great time right now. She's been through a lot. She's literally killed two people. Um, and so it would make sense for her to be struggling right now. Speaking of struggling, this is like Tyler's 
incredibly fancy hut, and meanwhile, he has open, finished plates of food in his bed. Tyler has a bed. Let's point that out, okay? The accommodations for a yeah. standard yeah. person at the retreat is a sleeping bag and a tent on the other side. He's got a bed. He's got a CRT TV that would make a retro gamer jealous. He's got a kitchenette, mm -hmm. a barbecue, a hammock, a private quarters even. Uh, he's got... Yeah. Uh, actual plates and silverware that he can use, which he chooses to leave in his bed. Uh, he's got a computer and what I assume to be Wi-Fi. The man is living comfortably here. What's that? Mm-hmm. No shoes, No though. shoes. Can't, no it's shoes. not so unreasonable. Yeah, no, he's still know? following the rules. You gotta blend in. When in Rome, you know, all that. When in Rome, take your shoes off. <laughs> Right when you said that, <laughs> right when you said that, someone in chat said probably even has access to shoes. Nope. No <laughs> shoes, not even for Tyler. That's his rule. No. Now we're gonna hang out here. Tyler is the feet guy. Y you know, he made the rule. Um, this is another conversation that often will trap you here. Is my prism doing which we are. I'm gonna break it simply by walking towards the geometry and using the camera against it. That is a trick that was not possible until the most recent patch of the game. You have to up patch the game to be able to do these specific tricks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to future patch. Yes. You have to predictive <laughs> patch your game. Mm -hmm. Just become a dev yourself, actually, and then... <laughs> and then... Get hired. And then respectfully apply for the position. And then make modifications yeah. to the game. <laughs> Purely so your time is better. Yes. Get compensated for your effort. Okay, Jess, you, there? Mm -hmm. you are worth it. What's up? Just yeah. We want to see you all winning, chat. These, this is all real advice. The Mercury thing was not real advice, but this is real. Yeah, yeah. It's your job to figure out what advice is real and which, which is fake. <laughs> Speaking of fake advice, we're going to get some from Tyler here because we can hear him now that we have his prism. And you learn just more and more that Tyler's uh, just, you know, totally fine, totally okay, and uh, doing well, and mm -hmm. um, has really done nothing unreasonable in any, any of this, or, you know? Yeah, no. He's never um, done anything wrong. No. Absolutely not. Not a day in his life. I know this, and I love him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Now, I mentioned at the very start of this run that we were playing as a pregnant woman named Babs. I'm bringing this up now because that's Tyler's mother. And so he was as baby inside of her. Uh, and it, that's important to note here because Tyler's chapter is all about unresolved family trauma, the grief of not knowing his roots, um, stepping into a generational conflict between his mother and his grandfather and like what to do with the literal inheritance of the cult uh because he did in fact inherit this island that's why we're all here so specifically hannah has sent us on a journey to find a mask that belonged to monroe anton it's an object of power um, we will have it at some point, but first we need to locate it. It's in the old commune, and it's going to take us a little bit to get there. So if there's any donations or messages you'd like to share with the audience, Rarus, now's a great time. Absolutely, but first I just want to point out that the, the phrasing of as a baby was inside his mom, like, destroyed me. <laughs> for, some, for some reason. I had to mute everything. <laughs> Are you kidding? All we do is cackle here. Like, you can just laugh directly into the mic. <laughs> uh, anyway, we have $50 from Ogre498. It says, work the Chrono Trigger incentive. You got it. Thanks for an awesome event. It has definitely made living in a house full of flu patients way better this week. Less than three. Oh my gosh. Oh, I yeah. hope, hope everyone feels better soon. I'm glad that this event is helping, though. 
Uh, so we are at four hundred and sixty dollars out of that four thousand, and I, I, with a little bit of quick math, it, I, it's not going to be exactly there. But if we meet that uh, Chrono Trigger New Game Plus run incentive, that's also going to put us right around seventy thousand dollars raised. Oh, oh, let's do it! Man, so we gotta a, do that. Let's do it! Let's that's do it! That's a win-win. This is for the National Women's Law Center, everybody. It's a great charity. So let's get those donations in. Let's do it. I believe in us. Chad, consider this your OSHA fine for <laughs> watching this game. Five dollar OSHA fine train. Pay up. You know yes. that's a reasonable. Yes, that's a reasonable amount to to contribute to the the cause here. Mm -hmm. uh, you might notice that I'm doing some gardening. This is a puzzle. Hannah has in her hands a document that has a bunch of symbols on it. The symbols correspond to the various planters around this greenhouse. We need four specific plants. There's something like six possible combinable ones that are not things that would make throwables or weaponry. Um, and so you can get this wrong. Uh, you can also mix them in the wrong sequence and end up with an item called alchemical mulch, which will just sort of sit in your inventory and mess up your menuing later on in the run. Um, so I am picking things cool. up in a specific sequence in hopes that it pays off later on. Um, we've got a glowing plant, a toxic plant, a, a spiky plant, and an odorous one, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, and we want to mix them into a blue paste, a lighter blue paste, and then mix those two blue pastes together to form red. I don't know why it forms red. Maybe some science folks in chat can donate and tell me why it forms red. Uh, but that is the sequence we need to get. Again, we need another wheel here. Don't worry about it. It's just survival horror things. Um, and then we will go back to the greenhouse. I want to point out here, uh, Tyler and Hannah's stories are interwoven. We've been focusing a little bit more on Tyler because he's the pressing one, but Hannah is important to consider here as well as his partner, quote unquote, or at least that's what she'll tell you. Uh, it is complicated. Tyler does not put a label on their relationship, and that is part of the reason why Hannah is not having a good time. Um, Hannah Thankfully, is also our financial um, backer for this whole experience. Go ahead, Astrid. Well, thankfully, Hannah, much like Tyler, I want to point out, is mm -hmm. not uh, one who's prone to making rash, sudden, last-minute decisions. Mm -hmm. Um that would endanger people in really, any way. Really yeah. stable and fully on top of it at all times, Hannah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Hannah, known stable decision maker. Yes. I trust uh, you by the tone in your voice that that is a true and factual statement. I believe you. Mm-hmm. Well, absolutely. I do love I mean, Hannah. <laughs> like, say anything with enough confidence and it's true. Been around this is manifesting, baby. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing prismic science in real time, gamers. Mm -hmm. So as we walk with Hannah, she's going to describe um, in detail Tyler's process of forming this place. Uh, it started off as a yoga retreat. And then with Sunny's investment, we're going to call it that, uh, it became more about spirituality and from there, it's sort of transcended into what we are experiencing now. Um, there is a lore document in the game that explains why this place, quote unquote, works. Because in theory, if you do the rituals correctly, no harm will come to you. Uh, because you'll have your wards, you'll have your safety procedures, you won't break the circle. But because Tyler has never made a wrong decision in his life, and he's absolutely equipped for the mental health burden that this place will place upon the people going here. Um, obviously, none of that happened, right? Yeah. Correct. Yes. yes. Yeah, no, everything's going just as planned. You're so right. This is way too shaky. This is so, some big scared remembering the routing mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, the, like, it's so, it's so simple because it's just like, remember where to go, but... Every speed run that has something like that always makes me smile. Mm -hmm. uh, the pattern there is left, and right, left like a soldier. Thing. And if you choose any of the others, it drops you into a room full of enemies. So it's good that we don't fall there. Hannah, can you hear yes. me? Yes. Oh my god. There's those things. They almost got me. Are 
you okay? I Can love you like speedrunner mnemonics like that in general where it's like yeah. Or, yeah, it's like, okay, left, right, left, like, you're doing, like, a march and stuff like that, where it's just, like, it's how you remember stuff, mm-hmm. and then when you say it out loud, you're like, oh, I might sound a little unhinged at this moment, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think that it's really neat seeing speedrunners do things that require that sort of, like, um, uh, just memory, because I think it just shows and demonstrates, like, if it wasn't already obvious... How it's like, oh no, that's a core memory now. Mm-hmm. It's just uh-huh. second nature to me. Yes. And it's one of the endearing things about watching people do speedruns. Mm-hmm. 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 And it's not like you can't have notes. Like, we, we yeah. having notes open is 110% a thing. Y'all, if, like, if y'all have watched speedrunners and you're like, they must be doing this like entirely from their brains, notes are absolutely like a normal thing. And mm-hmm. I, if you're worried that like you're just starting out and you're like, oh, well, I have to keep looking at my notes. No, 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 no. That's fine. Sometimes you'll have fun little mnemonics and it'll become muscle memory. But having notes is super viable too. Like both just the whole point is, can you get through it fast? And how you get there is so uniquely, delightfully personal. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's the best. Also, just, like, ask anybody who's ever run Ill Bleed if they have notes. They will 100% yeah. tell you yes every single time. I was thinking of Ill Bleed specifically. Now, I, sure I, want you to know I, I would be remiss not to give a shout out to another fatale that participated earlier, Abby's Corner. Uh, someone who is a phenomenal Ill Bleed runner that has every route memorized. Yes. Yes. So, Abby... There are, Abby there are just transcendent gamers out wild. there that are very skilled. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yes. I want to point out here that Hannah just gave us her prism. Her ability is invisibility, um, which is interesting, right? Because all of the abilities up to this point reflect things that are like traumas, sources of pain, sources mm-hmm. of suffering, uh, the developing that I couldn't do, the kids that I no longer have, the the anger that I feel bottled up inside. Hannah's is that she feels invisible, that she's an instrument mm-hmm. for other people's use. And so symbolically, her power is really tragic. Also tragic that we got three stuns there, which means we're gonna have <laughs> yeah. to use this. With the right path, I love the dissipation. You can only trigger two of those, which makes it less of a hassle. Um, and once again, those that, are run yeah, killers. Yeah, that was just bad luck. Those are burned bodies. Magister difficulty kind of forcing Big Scared to do things that normally you don't have to think about. Um, and but like Magister, you get to a point where it's like, nope, I I simply cannot afford to take a hit mm-hmm. here. Now, before this next fight, I'm going to actually use some upgrades. Um, This is something that you will not see on Neophyte difficulty because no upgrades are ever used on that difficulty. But because we are in spicy mode, we got to bring some heat ourselves. Monroe here is not a pushover. He's got two phases to his fight. And he also has the best cutscene in the game. Astrid, I showed this to you recently. Would you like to describe to folks yeah. what it is? Uh, let me let me put it to you all simply. Um, Tyler, uh, having his soul removed via um, a a face sucking by zombie grandpa. Mm-hmm. That did I do a good job? I feel I like you nailed it. Um, I'm Thank also you. going to equip a fire lash and our essential oils uh, because we're going to need it. I'm also going to equip, uh, once we get in here, Maya's spell. Now, Monroe himself is not hard. It's the fact that he has help. His cultists are here to help him. And so they will... His friends are his power. Consistently do things that try to knock me out of sync. Uh, As you saw, their little stun attacks more than once stopped me from healing. And so that Mm -hmm. first phase is really spicy. 
Phase two, I'm gonna need to focus, but if y'all can explain what's going on, that would be very helpful. Oh, is this the, hold on. Is this knockover time? This is time? knockover time. Is this, this is We're knockover time. at the Crystal time. Festival. I was like, hold on. All right. Yeah, okay. So, uh, you know how we were doing this thing before where we were tilting crystals into something to like charge it and refract? Uh, instead, we're going to be causing property damage, baby. But you'll notice that while this is happening, um, Big is basically just sitting there and susceptible to damage and that'll interrupt the pushover the entire time, um, which is absolutely horrible. So especially on Magister where not only does it cause you to have to like get up, stagger and come back over and continue the pushing, you take damage, which can be just like run killer time. Oh, and, and there it goes. Oh, by the way, is this Chris? Yep. yep. This is the spiciest fight, specifically because of that one crawling enemy. And the unfortunate part is we're going to get yeeted back to the start of the fight. And so there's three waves of combat here. Yeah. If you die in any of them, you got to do them over. Mm-hmm. This and we see that's literally sick, like, is floaty. as high stakes as it gets yeah. in this difficulty. Listen, this is this is big gaming, um, but yeah, you'll notice that one of the other things is that that crystal isn't just you know sitting there and pointing upwards and being fine. We also have like these like massive sweep attacks that are happening that Big has to dodge. Mm -hmm. So this is just a. I really, really hope that I don't get hit, but the inevitability mm -hmm. is not working out in my favor, kind of thing. Um, so this is really, really rough, but you can see big along the sides, like mentioned this way earlier that every arena has items, uh, that you can use for the fight. So like spear caps and everything like that. Um, but don't hit me. Yeah. This is just, this is really spicy. Yep. That's just uh, oh. empty. Don't hit me standing there pain. I was, um, Oh yeah. my goodness. If you clenched, I just gasped. <laughs> let us know. Yeah. Uh, they are immune. Is this a big serious time moment, or can we get some Yeah, you can get a dot or two in here. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we are getting the OSHA fines paid by chat. Uh, $5 from Lady Antisocial. It says, Well, I was told to pay my OSHA fine for watching this walking OSHA violations of a game. Thank you. Thank you. Your fine has been paid off. You are good to go. And another $5 <laughs> from Chief Beef 100. As someone that legitimately went to carpentry school and had to take a semester long course in OSHA regulations, this retreat is very cursed. <laughs> <laughs> take my $5 for the violations. Where to now? Thank you. Thank you for your uh, paying your OSHA fines. We appreciate your cooperation in this time. Gamers, I think I figured out why I took a death right there. I completely forgot to upgrade. I took a lot out of me. You know? Oh, <laughs> that would do it. That, you know, and because I'm used to watching you do Neophyte, everything looked regular. Yeah, my muscle memory for the other category really just took the front and center there. We're going to be forced to do mm -hmm. it for final boss, uh, just because there's literally no way to survive that fight if we don't. But we get a very fun chase segment right here. Uh, with our, our sister, Angie, uh, because, of course, she just wants to pop by and say hello. Angie just wants company. Incredible. Incredible dialogue just floating through. <laughs> mm -hmm. You will notice, though, that we have Hannah's ability and Hannah's alive, so it's not necessarily that murder was 100% required to get everybody's crystals and abilities. No, it's actually However. about, like, the duration of time that you wear the crystal. And so it was enough time for Jess to charge her crystal up by wearing it for, like, a couple hours. Tyler doesn't really wear yeah. his crystal, and so we're actually, when we use his ability, we're getting Monroe's powers uh which is to summon cultists out of the floor uh we don't really use it in either run but it's a cool ability casually cool dog excuse you cool dog uh cool dog is being really rude 
Yeah. What yeah. did I? What did I say about being cool? Be cool, dog. <laughs> Could you just be cool? And it looked at us and said no. It's no, all right. I'm gonna I'm go invisible. Gonna cool. It can't hurt me anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, it could there if it could lock on to me. And we're free. Beautiful. That's the last big frog think... of the run. Uh, there will be, unfortunately, one last pass through the intestinal highway. Uh, and as we sort of approach that area, where is, if there, is there any it? donations or things you'd like to share with us? Yes, uh, we actually got $25 from OSHA. Nice! Oh! Yeah! Uh, OSHA says, I'm feeling fairly violated right now. <laughs> <laughs> We also got $25 from Captain Fun. This says, gotta chrono those triggers. <laughs> we do. We gotta chrono those triggers. You got. You gotta remember that that's... Chrono looks into the camera, and he says that really chronos my triggers, and then he just chronos all over. No, he says it's chrono time. He does say it's chrono time. <laughs> I thought he said both. You know, you must have the director's cut of the game. Oh, the Snyder mm -hmm, Cut? Mm -hmm. Yes. We Listen. are at $540 out of that 4000 needed. Let's keep going, chat. I'm here for whatever John Chrono Trigger has to do, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is that... Is is John Chrono Trigger um, in cahoots with Johnny Trapangas? Absolutely. I've seen, I've seen him there. Yeah. At the, the trapangular meetings. You know? Mm -hmm. I feel like I recognize him from somewhere. <laughs> oh, thank I'm... you, chat. He says it's chrono time and then he trapangs all over yes, the place. Yes, ah, yes, yes. Oh, yeah, you're so right. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah, sorry, we forgot. You're so right, chat. You know, uh, Big Scared, I'm really glad that... Uh, Hannah's going to have a reasonable reaction to everything. That oh, yeah, done. totally. Um, she's also going to look exactly at us. Don't worry about it. I'm ready, Hannah. This is how normal people have conversation. I'm ready, too. <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite way to talk to a friend is to stand in front of them and look over my right shoulder, kind of, <laughs> and then just wave my hands in a forward direction. Yes. This really fosters connection. Yes. Hannah's making a good decision. Yeah. Time for Hannah to make good choices. What Hannah has decided here um, is to summon something. Mm -hmm. uh, to which, um, to which, you know, it, it seems reasonable. Why not summon one more thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she wants everybody back. Yeah. And this is the way to do it. Yeah. You know, they were her family and they definitely liked her for her and not because she's a trust fund baby and had money to fund them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she wants to bring them back. Where did she go? And she definitely has a way to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. definitely will work and is going to be normal. Much like Maya, Hannah was promised a company. We'll call it that. Mm -hmm. um, and because her friends died here, uh, the form they are offering is straight up revival. But they're not being necessarily clear about what that means or what that will look like. And so, uh, dear viewer, I encourage you to speculate, especially if you've never seen this game, what that could possibly mean. Because save is totally real. Maya got her kids back. Look, yeah. it's right there. Yeah. True. Yeah. Those were Maya's kids. She's a true mother. This mad dash that is going on here is it presents uh, choices sometimes. There's kind of like these: Do I want to stop and do this? Do I want to? Uh, do I want to? participate in this or is it faster to just run normally faster to just run but uh there's a lot going on and there's yeah. a lot of decisions to be made during this entire running sequence that's happening mm -hmm. as far as i know there is no way to defeat every enemy in this running sequence mostly because these skeletons cannot be killed they're set pieces 
Uh, if they grab you, though, they will knock you over and other enemies will hurt you. So we try not to get grabbed by them. All right, gamers. We're going to stop and uh, hit this stockpile point. While I do my yep. final crafting and some leveling up, Rara, if there's any donations to share, now's a great time to do it. We got time for two. Here she there sure are. Uh, so we have $25 from Anonymous with no comment. Thank you so much for that. Another $25 from Anonymous with no comment. And finally, $50 from Nightflyer with no comment. Thank you so much for those donations. They are very generous. I am uh, choosing to believe that those also were paying higher uh, OSHA fines that just weren't specified here. Mm -hmm. But I see you and I honor you for doing so. So $50 is for the no shoes. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Hey, look at this thing. So yeah, everything's oh back. All of our Goodness. friends, they're back, right? Yeah. Uh, Jay, what do we mm -hmm. call this boss? Uh, the amalgam. Uh, or really just a big bunch of friends? Yeah. Yeah. But Is that the correct answer? Luckily, what do what do you and I call this boss? Oh gosh. I mean, I have a tendency to just call this thing baby face. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> I'm so distracted. I'm sorry. I'm literally distracted right now because I forget every time until I'm looking at this that 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 bald one is actually Hannah. This thing ripped off her hair. Yeah. I just want everyone to be clear. That's why we call sorry. it the wig snatcher. Oh, yes, his wig. Oh, my God. Don't forget, Tyler my Anton is in this. Do we recognize yes. him anywhere? No. Where is he? He's bald. No. Yes. I, this he thing is. will snatch your wig if you get too close. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> Believe us, the hair is gone. So Hannah brings everyone back and they repay her by taking her hair? Yes. Yeah. The situation gets a little hairy. <laughs> Incredible. All right. I'm going to cycle around also, grab yeah, all this these boss things. Is, this boss is literally and in fact an amalgamation of all the other bosses, but you'll also notice that on like the sides of the arena are all spikes and you do have to be careful when you're going to pick up like your drops and HP and stuff like that along the sides because this boss can do basically like force, shout, scream, foo throw da sort of stuff and push you into those big painful spikes. And hey, guess what? We're on Magister. That's not good. Oh, yeah. she's doing the double swarm. It's... That's fun. Yeah, you don't really know which head you're going to have to deal with first. And each head is, you know, a different version of one of the bosses you fought before, but you can't, you can only prepare so much for which head you're going to get first, but Hannah is always the last one. And she summoned mm -hmm. another uh, one. What a rude. jerk. Harsh. Let's see if I can down her before she summons a second. We did it. Beautiful. All right. We just got to redefeat Maya and then the true final boss our own grief. Yep. Yes. Yep. Because we're in there and also out here. Mm -hmm. The whole That's reason we works. are here today on this retreat with our friends, part of the amalgam is to resolve the trauma of losing our sister. And so our energy is part of this as well. And this is the way that you resolve this trauma. And if you're Jess yeah. is by taking a fire lash and beating a amalgamation of all your friends. You also don't have hair in this case. I want to make that Time's going to be yes, whenever true. this head shrivels and we fade to black. And... Girl, I need you to not do that. There she goes. That's time. Yeah. Great job. Thank you. GG. GG. And as the amalgam it's shrivels wiggling. up and is sent back to wherever it came from, uh, per the body ending, Jess did not confront her trauma. She did not grow from this experience, and she will simply go home and remain traumatized. 
Um, this is the canonical bad ending of the game. There is another ending where we get sucked into a vortex, which will lead into the DLC. I'm not going to say too much about that in case you want to play it. And then there's a third ending where we literally get transported back in time. And it's the only other time we see Babs in the game. Uh, and so that's a nice <laughs> little fire. full circle moment. The fire on Kim's shoulder. We're just hugging our yeah. friend and actively burning her with sage. That sage stick is not supposed warm, to be friendly here. Hug. Yeah. That's a glitch. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember seeing this before, but I, I, I see it right now. No wonder they're bald. Their hair is about to go up. <laughs> yeah. We're lighting our hair on fire right now. Yes. I really, I respect how the body ending goes, hey, you're still traumatized over the death of your sister and not, you're still traumatized over what happened on that island. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, no, no. No, no, no. That was all fine. This, this not so much. She's not even going to talk to her friend about it. Kim technically survived no. this. Because we purified her, she got to continue on existing at the end of this, which is something the others did not get to do. And yet just continues alone. Life goes on. Yeah. And we live with our demons instead of defeating them. She's like, wow, that was that was wild anyway. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. uh, but thank you for having me. I'm Big Scared. You can find me on Twitch as Big Scared, or in most places of the internet as either Big Scared or I'm Big Scared. No punctuation or spacing. Uh if you don't see my avatar, that's not me. I've got a couple folks that I'd like to thank real quick. Uh, shout out to the Clock Tower stream team. Happy third anniversary. It's been an honor to be part of the group with y'all. And I'm so excited for the ways that you've pushed me to not only get into speedrunning, but grow as a creator. And I would not be here without your support. Uh, shout out to the Binary Bakers and Lady Arcaders. Uh, these are two communities that I'm very fond of and very uh, attached to. And I appreciate your support as well. Um, Domo arigato and muchas gracias to Japanese, uh, Japanese Restream and Speedruns en Espanol. I appreciate your hard work as well. Uh, thank you so much to the Fatals for letting me close up the second horror block of the marathon. This is a huge honor and it, it warms my heart that I got to do this. And last but not least, I'd like to thank my couch. Thank you to JPEG and Astrid for joining me today. I could not do this without you. If there's anything you'd Aww. like to say, now's a great time. Uh, thank you to you for being the incredible person that you are and a wonderful friend. And I wouldn't miss this for the world. And I adore you. And I like, and yeah, I'm just so lucky to be here. Thank you. I agree. Thank you so much for having me, Big Scared. It means a lot that you asked me to be here. You're wonderful and fantastic. And it was so lovely to be here and join you on this. Yeah. And that's Magister Mode. Thank you so much to all the donors for making this happen uh, and raising money for National Women's Law Center. Uh, take it away, Rara. Uh, so with that... Thank you so much, Big Scared, for that amazing run. I was laughing my butt off for so much of it. How's it going, Frostfatals? My name is Ruby Hart, and I am joined by the wonderful Swift Swiftaloo. How's Hello. it going, Swift? It's going pretty well. I mean, mm -hmm. I see we're all cozied up here. Yeah. I know you're ready for a slumber party here. Listen, <laughs> it's... I, I did a lot of work and I'm so happy to be here, but now I'm a broken bean who's tired and I've just been cuddling on a million couches. So one of the prizes that has been keeping me a lot of company, me and my broken foot, I'm so sad, is this adorable Yeti plushie. It's a little Yeti plushie from our friends at the Yeti. This is a $10 minimum donation. It is so soft. I have been cuddling with this thing for a little bit and I can say that he would absolutely keep you warm on the frostiest of nights. Then uh, moving forward, so speaking of adorable art, oh, adorable yeah. plushies. We have some really, really great laminated tales of characters. Uh, so this is a bundle of 17 different characters, I believe, from a bunch of the games in the Tales of series. So if you were familiar with these really, really classic narrative RPGs, uh, then you probably have seen many of these characters. I will say that I absolutely adore the art style 
It's very chibi. <laughs> it's very colorful. Um, and honestly, these are the kinds of things that I would put on a bag or on a keychain. Yes. Yes. I, I feel like it would go perfectly with that, right? Yes, it would. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So this whole thing, so all oh of these, yeah. trying all to get it organized, are a ten dollar minimum donation. These are sent by our wonderful friend Lynn Study Seven. Thank you so 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 much for sending these in to us. You're very cute. Mm -hmm. And then moving on to something you were oh, really excited yes, about. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. <laughs> so I basically played a guessing game with Ruby earlier of uh what 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 kind of patches do we got here? What <laughs> characters do we have or what games are they from? So first one to start off, we got Celeste. You know, it's Celeste. These are <laughs> these are so wonderfully made by the way. Then we got Kirby. Who doesn't love Kirby? Then we got Mario. You know, it's Bowser. Then we got Sonic. I love yeah, Sonic. So and then we got, we got Deltarune. <laughs> it's so it's so cool. And then we got, <laughs> I know Ruby got a little tripped up at this. This is actually Pokemon. This is Team Yell, uh, mm -hmm. which I, I love. Uh, and then we got Metroid. And then we have Kingdom Hearts. These are super, super lovely. Thank you so much. Wolven Wings for sending these in. They are a $10 minimum donation to get all of them. And you know, you could just iron it on like a jacket or something. I wholeheartedly well agree. Yeah, I, I absolutely <laughs> love patch jackets. And when you can just take something that looks really, really great, add a little bit of extra geek to it. Uh, patches yes. are a really, really great way to do that. Uh, then moving forward, something that we actually made earlier in the day. So <laughs> Swift is very familiar with this because you were one of the people who uh, helped make it. So yes. yeah, this was made by you and Dijon Ketchup <laughs> in the segment earlier. So this is a faith perler. This is a $10 minimum donation. Uh, and also just we encourage you to make your own perlers at home. Take a look at the tutorial earlier if you want to make uh, something than like this. Yes, right. although some of it may not, <laughs> might, might, might need a few extra steps with that one. Uh, Dijon has, you know, a lot of speed run materials at home. Oh, um, yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and then uh, next oh, one up. Yeah. I'm so excited about this. So this is a Legend of Zelda inspired jewelry. And it is so pretty. I love the colors for this. Um, now, I did not know this until I was looking at the description of what this is, but these are actually colors that are in binary to spell out um, exactly what uh, all this is. So I know there's like Link, Kokiri, Zelda, Fairy, Ganon, um, Korok, I think Korok, I, I don't uh, remember exactly let's which see, one. I believe there's also uh, Giga, yes. uh, Koki, let's see, Kokiri, Zora, yes. and okay. a few yeah, others. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and th the really lovely thing is the beading, um, every single one of them is meant to not only look really lovely to go with basically any geek chic outfit that you have, but the color schemes, uh, as uh, Swift was mentioning with the patterning, yes. um, are also very specifically chosen to be influenced by the color scheme of what the Koroks look like, what uh, the different characters are represented by. Um, and I think it's a really great homage to just so many characters and cultures in the series. Yes, mm -hmm. it really is. Um, that is a $10 minimum donation. Do you, yeah. <laughs> Do you happen to know who sent it in? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's okay. It went a little Okay, yes. completed creations. Thank you so much for sending that in completed creations. Ten dollar minimum donation will get you in to win that, um, as well as everything else we have so talked about so far. Now, let's get on to the Genshin Impact enamel pins. We do not have them in studio, but if you go to gamesdonequick.com slash prizes, you can see all the photos of that. They are beautifully beautifully made. I went on there and looked in more detail on them. They are so wonderfully crafted and just the design of them is absolutely incredible. Thank you so much. Different <laughs> different distraction designs for sending those in. It is a 25 minimum dollar donation. Yep. And one thing I wanted to mention also is so many of these other prizes, we're not going to go into too much more depth just because we've been able to highlight all of them multiple times at this point, but all of the other prizes that we don't talk about here, yeah. many of the others you see in the background will all be at that same page. So that gamesdonequick.com slash prizes. Yes. Um, then moving forward, the thing that has been <laughs> keeping me warm on <laughs> 
on this couch all day, which is this amazing large Faith and Frost Fatales blanket. So this is into into us by Core. So thank you so 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 much for getting it into us. And it is very snug. <laughs> It has been such a comfort today. Genuinely, you have made my life a better place. Not only is it made of velvet with fleece backing, so it's incredibly soft for a, a, a nice cold night, but it also has adorable art of our wonderful FF mascot, Faith, uh, basically playing games with multiple different consoles that we see all the time in our events. So anything from PS5 controllers, Xbox controllers, all the way back to classics like the Sega Genesis. So uh, really great <laughs> the piece. Guess too. Mm -hmm. oh, I love it so much. That is a $50 minimum donation. And if you donate those $50, you'll be entered to win everything we've shown here today, which was amazing. That's Absolutely. wonderful. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't be a prize that again if we didn't talk about the grand prize, uh, the Hollow Knight Queen's Gardens Respites. Is it respite or is it respite? So I've always heard it pronounced as respite, but everyone else has been pronouncing it as respite. And this is one of those chameleon chameleon moments of I don't know if I've been mispronouncing it my whole life or if everyone either. else is. I please tell us on Twitter. I don't know. Just tell us, tell us how to actually pronounce it. But this was made by Sky Berkson, the grand prize. So if you donate that fifty dollars, it actually puts you a quarter of the way there because yes. if you donate two hundred dollars cumulatively throughout the course of the week, uh, then that enters you to win. And this piece by Sky was handmade with a laser, cr uh, laser cut paper yes. with a uh, beautiful painting, a little bit of plexiglass. And it's such a beautiful replica that it reminds me of really, really highly... Uh, highly crafted as far as the skill and everything else creations for like D&D &D miniatures <laughs> and tabletop miniatures. So yeah. definitely take a look at this piece uh, yes. a, a, a little bit closer up. Um, it's it's so beautiful. Yes. You can see all those photos at gamesdonequick.com slash prizes to see all the photos of that. It is a beautiful, gorgeous piece. Thank you so much, Sky Berkson, for sending that in to us. Absolutely. And when you get in those donations, make sure that you are also putting them towards incentives that you are looking yes. forward to. We have so many amazing incentives, so many incredible games coming up over the course of the next few days and a ton more FF to I come. I want to see Chrono Trigger. I know, I want to see Chrono Trigger. I want to see Chrono Trigger. Chrono Trigger. For Chrono, Trigger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chrono Trigger is wonderful. We have some wonderful runs coming up the rest of the night. So I think we should just get back to yeah. the action. So right now we have Chrono Cross Radical Dreamers Edition, uh, Link's Percent Fast Forward that is going to be done uh, in just a a second here by Jerry Condra, and if we get that extra incentive met, Chrono Trigger. So I can't wait to see those runs. Stick around. <laughs> 